Hello, today we're going to talk about medium format landscape photography. We're going to look at what medium format is, why it might be of interest to you, and take a little look at this magnificent Fujifilm GFX 50S. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, a domain name, or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. Okay, let's go. I'm here in the beautiful North Yorkshire. It's a fantastic autumn day and there's also the signs of the first frost. It's a bit windy and cold, but really, I really don't mind that. So what is medium format? It pretty much gets its name from the old 120 film. It was bigger than 35 millimeter film, but used to go into the old Hasselblads and things like that. And it, because it was bigger, it was generally considered better quality because it could soak in more of the light. Now we're with digital photography, that name is given to any sensor that's bigger than 35 millimeter sort of full frame lens uh, sensors. This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S. This is a medium format camera. If we just take the lens off quickly, it's mirrorless as well. Look at the size of that sensor. It's absolutely, absolutely massive. So why we might be interested in medium format is because with that bigger sensor, the pixels are bigger as well. So this is a 50 megapixel sensor, the same as some of the full frame cameras have now, but because those pixels are bigger, they spread further apart as well. It generally makes the image quality better. It does that by having a bigger dynamic range and also it has lower noise as well. The image files that this camera, this Fujifilm camera creates, they're just out of this world. Absolutely beautiful. This is not a review. I just want to talk a little bit about medium format. So what we're going to do today is we're going to grab an image with this. We're going to then go through the whole process of post-processing and then creating the final print because that's really what you're going to get a medium format camera for. The, the final prints are where you can really notice the difference. There is an important thing to talk about first though, because as you might know, the Fujifilm GFX 50S is a £6,000 camera. Now I haven't bought it. Fujifilm have loaned it to me for a couple of weeks. With the lenses as well, I've got two lenses in the bag. That brings the total to about £10,000. Now that's out of my price range. I'm sure it's out of your price range as well, but I like to know what is at the very top end. Now you, you are talking about cameras like Hasselblad that very few people are going to do landscape photography with. I still like to know what's at the top because I want to know where that quality, that performance can really go to. But when I am buying my own gear and cameras, I, I look at it like this. So I've got a piece of paper here. So I'm going to draw a little graph and down this side, we're going to do that. And on that side, performance cost with a very, very cheap camera, a toy camera, for example, would start down here. And as you start to spend a little bit more money, the performance goes up very quickly. We start to spend more money and we get into the sort of APS-C type camera that I'm filming on today and the performance still goes up as the cost naturally goes up as well. As you start to spend more money, it's a case of diminishing returns as I'm sure you know. So the sort of line starts to go like this because performance is still increasing but cost starts to increase a lot more. So for the more money you spend, you're only getting a very slight increase in performance and it continues like that. So you get this sort of curve along like that. Basically, that is the value curve. For me, I am looking to hit an area just around here. That's, that's the best value area for me. And I want to get all my gear pretty much in that area. But I am still interested in what is happening up here with the top performance, but I'm never going to spend that amount of money for basically being at the very top end of performance and the top end or an early adopter, that kind of thing. Can't get the lid out, I'll pick that up in a minute. But then when we look at here, this changes over time. So when we look at the cameras like I've got with me today, the medium format cameras, they're gonna, over time, they are going to start trickling back down this curve. And that's why I was interested in trying out this 
50S or the GFX 50S because Fuji are on the verge of releasing a camera with the same sensor. It's going to be called the GFX 50R, I believe, and that is going to be around, we think, about £4,000. It's definitely going to be cheaper than the, the, uh, the 50S because they are also bringing out a 100 megapixel medium format camera. So it's exciting times because what happens here, like in Formula One on race driving, where at the very top in Formula One, you get all this new technology. And as time goes by, it starts to trickle down to where those consumer cars are, the ones that we drive every day. And the same happens in photography and it has been doing for years. So that will continue. These, these medium format cameras will start to come into the range of affordability and at that point we will be able to grab hold of the amazing image quality that it provides. If that 50R is in the £4,000 bracket that's going to start to be affordable for a lot more people and possibly me as well so interesting times. Right so I'm set up for my shot and it's one I've shot two times before because I am trying to get this composition in every season. I've got a summer one, I've got a winter one now I'm going for the autumn one as well. When I get them all, they will present an image overall, a project overall that I'm going to be really, really proud of. It's Rosebury Topping in North Yorkshire, very close to where I grew up. So it means a lot to me. And that is why I do this. And it's something people ask me a lot about. Should you shoot the same thing over and over again? Yes, you should. And this is one idea that you can use to do that. So composition, similar to what I've shot before, I've got the heather in the foreground, this winding path that sort of takes you around up to Rosebury Topping just there in the distance. You've got little Rosebury over on that side as well. The rocks and that golden light and it's just looking beautiful. Across the seasons the sun will be in a different place as well. Today it's just going to be setting to the left of Rosebury Topping so it is going to be in the shot so I'm going to have to make sure that I don't get any flare in this image. This Fujifilm GFX 50S is very close to being the perfect landscape camera. It's 50 megapixel, medium format, and the controls, if you've used the next, one of the X-series cameras from Fuji before, very similar. You've got all these dials on the top and the aperture dial on the lens itself. So it all feels quite manual, really nice to use, very straightforward camera, and it's all about that image quality. It does shoot video, but you would you'd be daft to uh, buy this camera for that reason. It's purely, going to be probably for landscape photographers and then some people shooting in a studio although the flash sync is fairly low so a lot of people aren't too happy with it as a studio camera but as a landscape camera I think it comes close to being pretty much perfect. So settings wise just so you know I am at f16 a 1 15th of a second that may come down a little bit as it starts to get a little bit darker and then ISO 100. The camera is pretty much the same size as my Canon 5D Mark IV although the lenses are bigger because they've got to be wider at the end to fill that full uh, that medium format sensor so it's going to be pretty heavy but that's what it's, it's going to still provide that amazing quality. The lens I have on here at the moment is a 23 millimeter lens. Now with medium format, you kind of have to crop down. So the 23 millimeter lens here, the full frame 35 millimeter equivalent is 18 millimeters. So it kind of goes the opposite way to what we're used to from APS-C to full frame. But um, I think I'm set. It's just a case of waiting for the sun to get in the right place uh, and then put this camera to work and hopefully I can get it right and make the best image possible. There's some beautiful browns and oranges in this scene. There's a tree just at the bottom of the hill here with some beautiful yellows and oranges on there. The browns in that fern, the dying off fern from a distance look absolutely fantastic and the great thing that about this camera with its dynamic range it's going to be able to pull all of that detail out of what will be a fair few shadowy areas. So I'm really excited to see this image at the end. This is the classic sort of horizon cloud that I always get when I'm here. It might be useful just to get that sun going a little bit behind that to reduce some of the flare as well. So uh, I'm excited about what is going to happen here. Uh, I am going to put you down and we'll wait for the sunset because I want to get this right. And then once we've done that, we'll go back and post-process the image. So I'll see you very soon. So I'm back in the studio and unfortunately the shoot didn't quite go according to plan because I think there is some kind of problem with this particular lens. It's not Fuji fault, but 
Uh, I think this particular one has a bit of a problem. We'll have a look at that in a minute. I did go out the next day and shoot another shot. So we'll go through the post-processing of that just to really see the quality of the camera. So let's get into the computer now and we'll have a look. Okay, so we're into Lightroom and there's three images I want to show you. Firstly is the one that we just saw on the video. That's this one here. If we go full screen, there's flare in it for one because I didn't bother going through the rigmarole of processing that out with the thumb technique. Uh, but also it isn't actually the best picture because there's so much blue sky in there. I was hoping or expecting a little bit more cloud in the sky, which would have made it a better picture anyway. But just at this distance, it kind of looks okay. But then when we zoom into the center, which is what I did when I was looking at the image on the back of the camera, it looks reasonably sharp. I'm three to one there, so I'm in very close uh, and it looks reasonably sharp. But as we start to drag towards the edges, the, the sharpness just drifts away from the center, basically all the way around, even on the same focal plane. Once you go around the same, uh, once you go out of the center, it just goes so smudgy. And look, you can see that there, smudginess. The hill in the distance is smudgy and blurred. And I was at f16, so that shouldn't have happened. And it just doesn't look very nice. I think there must be prob a problem with one of the elements or something. Fuji will hopefully get that sorted out. Not their fault, not a big deal. These things happen. So I just wanted to show you that very quickly. So uh, the next day though, I went up to County Durham and went out on a little trek with my dad, which was nice and caught a couple of images. Now I just wanna show you this one very quickly. If we go full screen on that one, the reason I wanna show you this is because I quite like the image anyway. It's also, you get that sort of more square format that medium format provides as well. But just to show you the detail, you've got the full image there. And if we zoom in at three to one on this area here, bang, look at that. Look at the detail at three to one. We're in really close on that now. You can see the detail in that pier, which is looking towards Hartlepool. I think that's Seton Carew, if my geography serves me right. But the detail at three to one is incredible. It's not perfect by any means, but it's still just, it, we're in so far. Look at that. I mean, imagine the crop you could do to get that. And it still looks okay. And it's quite a nice image, in fact. It, that blew me away. It just that, that high megapixel, that high quality of megapixel as well. It's just astounding. If we zoom in on something a little bit closer, again, nice image, just like that. It, the sort of possibilities it starts to create of cropping out of one main image. I wouldn't really encourage you to shoot like that, but the possibility is there. So I just thought that was quite, I got quite excited about that. Uh, and I just wanted to show you it quite quickly because the quality of this camera is just pretty special actually. And if they can put this in a cheaper body, I'll be excited. If they produce a hundred megapixel version, I'm going to be excited as well. So yeah, like I said, exciting times. But well, let's go and edit the main picture that I wanted to show you. So if we just go into the develop module, this is the picture I shot. Now this is a shot from Black Hall Rocks on the County Durham coast. This is where they used to dump loads of coal in when they were doing all the mining on the, on the Durham coastline. This used to be black. I remember going there as a kid and it was black and it was absolutely disgusting, but it's since been cleaned up a much nicer area to visit and to photograph. So that's what I've done. Uh, this is, what settings are we on? So we're at 64 millimeters, F8, two and a half second exposure. I would have liked to have gone a little bit longer, but it looks nice anyway. It was just so windy though. You can see all the, the white foam on the sea and the waves are just, it was amazing. I wish I'd vlogged it, but I didn't because I was just having a nice little trip out with my dad. I will go back there and vlog soon though. Uh, so let's just edit this one quickly because I am going to print this as well because I'm really happy with it, uh, I think. But the good thing about medium format as well is that you can crop and the, it's such a square format. That's not what I wanted for this image and I couldn't really get in any closer. So I'm going to crop this down to probably uh, something like a 16 by nine because I don't want that much sky in the image. I'm gonna go down like that. And I think that looks pretty good. I've still got that deep dark cloud at the top of the image up here, which is what I want 
to uh, really focus on. But I do need to take off the little bit of the color cast that the filter, the ND filter I was using produces. So I'm just going to go as a hue. And I know from experience that it just adds magenta in. So I'm just going to bring that down and bring that down just to neutralize it a little bit, but that's done. So next let's draw in a gradient from the top to probably around there. I just want to darken this area a little bit more to really emphasize the feeling I was getting when I was there, which was brutal, windy, coastal conditions. Brilliant it was. Uh, I'm then going to, shall I bring the highlights down a bit? as well i don't want that clarity in there and i think that looks fine let's just up the shadows a bit to take care of this area here and then we're done with that now let's just go through i'm happy with the exposure I'm just going to increase the contrast a bit to about 45 i'm actually going to add a contrast curve as well yeah that's starting to look nice i'm then going to raise the shadows up a touch and bring the highlights down up the shadows a little bit more actually because you can really draw the quality and the detail out of the shadows with this the high dynamic range that this camera has that low noise as well so i'm just going to go up to about 65 whites i'm not going to go all the way somewhere to about there hold down the option key just to check it that's all the way let's have a look at that that's a bit too far i think i'm going to come back a touch and then just drag the blacks down a tiny bit now let's add a little bit of vibrance and saturation. The files, that the raw files that the Fujifilm camera produces, Fuji have already put, they embed a kind of slight tweak to the raw files when Lightroom installs or when you put them into Lightroom. And that's something camera companies can do now with Lightroom. Uh, they have a profile built in. This one does have a profile built in. You can see there it's got a profile built in, built in lens profile applied. That does that automatically. It's also added 40 sharpness as opposed to the normal 25 that Lightroom adds by default. So it does the, the, the raw files from this camera do come out straight into Lightroom looking pretty darn good. Uh, so yeah, we're not far away there. I'm just gonna reduce the saturation a little bit. Now that I've looked back at it again, yeah, there. And I want to just reduce the white balance as well, just to bring in that bleak feeling that I was getting at the time. Somewhere around there, let's just increase. No, we don't want that, that was fine as it was. And I just want to enhance the sort of yellow color down here. So I'm just gonna grab a quick brush and I don't want that clarity. I'm going to increase the shadows just a touch as well, increase the contrast and the white balance as well and then just paint that on in this area just to enhance that touch and that looks pretty good i might just drag that white balance back a little bit two out there and now i think that looks pretty good that's not far from complete so i'm just going to go ahead create a soft proof for that and get this printed because it's these high resolution images when you print them that it really starts to make the difference and i'm really <laughs> excited to see what this camera can do uh, what the, the sort of prints that it creates so i'm going to get that into the printer we'll see what that looks like right so here is the final print it looks absolutely fantastic. I am thrilled with it. What you get is when, when you look really close at it, there is still a huge amount of detail. On a print this size, which is A3+, plus, it's gonna be a very minute difference, if any, over a sort of full frame camera. It's when you start to blow it up much bigger that it really starts to count for a medium format camera like this. But when you demand the highest quality, this camera is producing an absolutely beautiful print. And, and you can see that it's just, it's pretty much flawless. We've got that beautiful sea fret that was blowing in off the sea that really makes this image sharp details all through this sort of area here. The cloud looks great as well. I'm really chuffed with that image. I think the print looks great. Yeah, beautiful, really happy with that. 
top stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you on this subject. Like I said at the start, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you see and what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, like, subscribe, do what you need to do, and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography. Out. Yeah. Say what you want to say.